Nvidia is growing faster than anybody. So is Meta's Threads and Slow Boy, but really exciting. AMD giving you the value. Let's get in the hot news, everybody. I'm your bright host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Tuesday, July 11th, 2023. You know what that means, Reese? Oh, what's July? Look at that. What it's is Prime Day? No, it's free Slurpee Day at 7-Eleven, you yeah. ninkaboop. Uh, I'll just throw away the whole thing now. Well, that's not what NVIDIA is gonna be doing because they have reported growth. There's been aggregated details on all of the IC companies that are out there and NVIDIA is really the only one seeing any sort of success. So comparing it against Qualcomm, AMD, and a few others, Nvidia is the only one not stagnating. As you can see here from Q4 of last year to Q1 of this year in terms of revenue, Qualcomm is up 0.6%, Broadcom is down 2.7%. I'm surprised that both of these companies are bigger than Nvidia. That's just slightly unexpected for me just because I haven't been looking into it. AMD down 4.5% this year, as well as MediaTek being down down with the idea being that just not a lot of people are buying as many chips as they once were, unless your NVIDIA is seeing double digit growth, 13.5%, the only company in this space to be doing it, obviously because of AI. AI! It's not gaming, it's AI. Oh, this is obviously to no surprise to anybody who's been paying attention, but it does put into stark contrast just how much of a juggernaut these H100 chips and A100 chips and everything that Nvidia has to sell in order to get these large language models working. It is saving their bacon from being down because of the crypto losses and all of the money that nobody's paying for GPUs right now. It's stocks only go up. They keep getting lucky. They had the mining thing and now they got the AI thing. It's not luck. They were prepared, but gosh dang is it good, which is also today's video sponsor. This is good. Today's video is sponsored by Autel and their Maxi Charger AC Lite, which is currently 30% off for Prime Day. I've been using an Autel Maxi Charger for the last six months as my primary way of charging up my plug-in hybrid minivan. It allows me to get a way faster charge than the included level one charger. And with the Maxi Charger AC Lite, you can get up to nine times faster of a charge with it supporting up to 50 amps, allowing for a charging speed of up to 37 miles per hour. My favorite thing about the Maxi Charger is the Autel Charge app. It allows me to customize everything to my liking. It can connect over Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, or even Ethernet, and you'll be able to see how much charges have cost you for the month, set the charging speed, manage the charging times to be on only off-peak hours, and so much more. You don't have to depend on the vehicle to do any of that, just the charger itself. You also get remote firmware updates and real-time notifications and reporting. I typically know that my wife just got back home because the Autel app alerts me that our minivan has just been plugged into charge before she even walks into the door. And it's super robust with NEMA 4 protection, allowing it to be safe in the rain, snow, and even dust. It can operate from negative 40C up to 55C with an IP65 certification, meaning it's great in an outdoor environment, but will also do just fine in the garage. So check out the Autel Maxi Charger AC Lite at the link in the video description where you can get 30% off for Prime Day, and they even have a brand new Sierra Blue Charger that you can check out as well. Big thanks again to Autel for sponsoring today's video. And you know what also is fast like that EV charger, the Autel one? The other stuff. This 4090, because we that talked one. about in Hot News last week that a world record got set for the RTX 4090 being the first GPU to pass four gigahertz. And what did we remark? That it should have been 4090. It should have been 4090 megahertz. Well, Sens allegedly heard us and clocked it to 4090 megahertz. The 4090 ran at 4090, except for in this screen grab, it's 4095, which doesn't... <sighs> it's good, I like it good fast, but um, man, it's too much. It went too fast this time. We gotta have it right. Slow it down. Obviously, if it hits 4095, it can hit 4090, but you know, congratulations to Sense. Here's all the benchmark numbers for what that 4090 could hit in terms of Port Royal, Time Spy, all of that stuff, just seeing how fast. Compare your graphics card against this, and pathetic. let me know. Let me know how pathetic your GPU is stacked up against a 4090 running at 4090. And I am pathetic stacked up against the deals man who's gonna deal you some deals. Yeah. And we're back with deals. Whee! All right, first deal up, we have the Razer 27 inch 165 Hertz 1440p display. This thing is gigantic and it's honestly, it's more of a showpiece than anything else. But if you've been wanting to pick one up, you can grab one for only $349.99. How much did you pay for this? Okay, number one, I will say that based on that spec sheet and that price, it's not honestly it's terrible. Not. It's a little bit overpriced, but this thing is like, it's velvet. It has like texture on the back, it fabric. It is, like I said, a showpiece statement monitor. It's a whole experience. 
I will admit that I am one of the nincompoops who bought one of these bad boys back when they came out. I was gonna do a review on it and then realized, oh, there's nothing positive to say about this. It is $800 or $750, whatever I paid back in the day. Oh yeah. Not Three, worth it for that price. $350, you, can, you cool. can swing it. But if you want an even faster monitor. Looking for raw specs, go with the HP Omen 27 inch 1440p. 240 hertz monitor going for only $299.99, making it $130 off. Less of a showpiece though, it's got that pathetic little doodly stand, whereas the Razer one's all metal and ching, ding, 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 ding. Also, it has Genshin for some reason. Why? Why would you do that? And then last thing, we have the XFX Speedster Swift 309 RX 6700 graphics card. This 10 gig graphics card is going for only $269.99 making it only $10 off, but actually a really solid price overall. That's a solid price overall, but in case you want all of the Prime Day deals and everything that's on sale in tech, come join us over in our Twitch stream. Reese is gonna be reviewing- Live deals! All of the live deals over on Twitch right now as you're watching this. Even if it's six years in the future, Reese is reviewing live deals right now. Right I'm lying. Now, at this moment, he's lying. But yes, come join us tomorrow. And deals. But, you know, just like you're joining Reese for the live deals, turns out that everybody wanted to join Threads. There was a dearth of microblogging and people didn't want to be on Twitter. And it's been reported that Threads, or th is it Thread? No, it's Threads. Oh, threads. It's 100 million users in less than a week, which makes it one of the fastest growing things around. I got in at 1 million. Suck it. I don't even care where I got in. That's the difference between you and I. This does show that it is expanding quite rapidly. It had been at 30 million by the first seven hours and then 24 hours later is at 60 million. Now it's past 100 million. I think that there's a lot of stuff that they need to change, which they have openly admitted to that it's missing features that they are going to be adding. It does seem like this was a quick launch for them trying to capitalize on all of the downfall that's going on over at the blue little birdie that's happening right now. But, but hopefully we should see things fixed. Chronological feed would be great. Not seeing so many random celebrities that I like haven't thought yeah. of in decades. Like why am I getting Paris Hilton threads? <laughs> I don't know. Why mine, is this happening? Mine is like okay curation so far because I imported like all my stuff from Instagram. But if you're starting like- Yeah, I don't follow fresh. anybody Instagram. So I like I had nothing to go on. I'm just yeah. following people raw and it's giving me weird situations that are happening right now. And that might be what you're in. If you're thinking that, oh, hey, I just bought a 13700K, got a pretty good deal because the 14700K is coming. We got some details on that. It's allegedly supposed to be launching this October, also known as the Raptor Lake Refresh. Intel not changing a whole lot about the 14 gen should fit on current generation motherboards. That's three generations on one motherboard socket, my friends. That's How dare they? That's AMD levels of good. Anyways, the 14th gen does seem like they're going the Intel route of packing more cores into it with the i7 having 20 cores, allegedly making it so that it's faster. Eight performance cores, 12 efficiency cores. It's allegedly supposed to be pretty fast. It's supposed to be roughly 15 to 20% faster in multi-core and about 4% in single core. It's a refresh, it's not a huge upgrade. This is the tick instead of the talk. Intel giving you a little bit better, a little bit sooner than you would expect. It does have more cache, so that could be one of the reasons that this does get faster in gaming. It's one of the things AMD has been doing with X3D, just chucking cache mm -hmm. at it and saying, hey, this game's faster now. Maybe we're getting the same from Intel right now. If it works, it works. Just chuck the cash at everybody. And I want to chuck my cash at AMD, the money kind, not the uh, L1, L2, L3 kind, because the 7500F has been benchmarked and it's looking mighty spicily good with this chip, the 7500F, not having an integrated GPU, but basically having every other feature that you found in the Ryzen 5 7600, except for just 100 megahertz lower. Not that much of a difference. Still has the 32 megabytes of L3 cache and it looks like it performs roughly where the 7600X comes in in terms of multi-core performance and a little bit slower in 7600X. Now, one of the issues that Video Cards points out in this roundup they have right here is that uh, Geekbench changed versions recently and that's creating some chaos. So the 7600 hasn't been re-benchmarked with DDR5 6000 megahertz in this setup. So we don't know how it compares against the 7600, but it looks to be roughly the same. Maybe this is the reason AMD's not giving us a whole lot of budget stuff is because it's all they can't down, make it slow enough to segment it. I'm okay with this. Yeah. I want this to exist. We heard the rumored price point over in Korea was roughly $170 to $180. You slap that together with an $80 A620 motherboard. You're starting to look like a really good, at least budget entry into to Ryzen 7000. I, this could be it. 
This could be the way to go. Maybe they'll sell it to us or they'll do what they did with the G series chips way back in the day. Only OEMs, you want a pre-built? That's where you're getting it. Or on eBay from Hong Kong, like I did when I yeah. reviewed the 4750G. Who knows? Let me know if you're excited for the 7500F. Let me know if you're excited for live deals with Reese. And I'm gonna let you know that we'll see you for hot news tomorrow, my friends. Nice. Cute. They deserve that. Oh. You know, little stinkers. <laughs>